as a, as a, as a whole, as a group, uh, the horses that we're breeding today can't take as much training as uh, the ones uh, in their years ago. And uh, so we, we have to change our training methods as, as accordingly. He went on ahead, Frank come up to the barn and, uh, and look at the horses. And Frank just, he looked over the webbing and uh, he, he looked for about 30 seconds and he'd say, and he, he'd say, well, that's a, that's a $5,000, or that's a $10,000 horse, I've got three of those. Uh, that's a $15,000 horse, I've got two of those. Um, he was looking for something to fit in his barn that he didn't have, you know, that type of thing. And now, and, and I, just, I just listened. He didn't run his hand down a leg, he just looked at the individual. And uh, by God, you know, the son of a gun was right. And you know, you, that's, uh, that's what I call a horseman. <laughs> There's no such thing as a day off in racing. Are you kidding? <laughs> they just retired Damascus and he was uh, at Belmont in the fall. And he was leading him around in the afternoon outside in the grassy area over there near his barn. And I was leaning on the fence talking to him. And, and uh, he just volunteered and said, he said, what do you do after this? Because here in Damascus, it just beat Buck Passer and Dr. Figure and, you know, it just, it was just it was horse of the year and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and uh, I just didn't say a word. I just looked up and looked down. And here, just a couple years later, here comes Ruffian. <laughs> so there's no end to it. <laughs> Well, he's dealt with so many different situations, and um, there's a, he just has an endless wealth of knowledge. And uh, you can say, well, you have to do do things this way or that way because of uh, the way the track is and so forth. And he'll tell you a story about, well, this is where we had a track that was like this, and this is the way we did it, and this is what happened, you know, and it's exactly the opposite of what you were just talking about. <laughs> so, but only he can do that, you know. It's really, at the time, at the time, it was a job. Uh, and um, when, when, when in the position I was in with a horse with that kind of ability, uh, there was, there was nothing that I could do. The horse was, the horse had the ability. He he would do it. The only thing I couldn't do anything right. I could only make a mistake, and uh, that's that's where I was. And I put, I mean, so I put myself in a position of, of really having to perform absolute perfection. And uh, that's tough. That's tough. And. Um, and a perfectionist at times winds up being a very, very lonely person. And uh, you're, because you're going against, you're, you're going against a lot of other people's ideas at times, and, and, uh, but you're going to do it your way, and that's that. And uh, you won't be popular doing it that way, but if you can pull it off, they'll love you. You make a mistake and they'll bury you. To talk about what he did, I like to tell stories and speak the truth a little awkward every now and again. <laughs> so things like that. But I don't know, that's, that's a tough question to answer.